What's up, Coderbyte? Welcome back to another Data Structures and Algorithms video. I'm Elizabeth, and today we are going to be introducing a brand new pattern in our interview pattern series. Today, we're going to talk all about the two pointers pattern, which is a great pattern and one that probably a lot of you have already kind of used and played with. So hopefully this will be a refresher. If not, that's okay. Welcome. And um, also, I am in my new apartment. I moved out of my parents' house. It's a brand new year. I'm super excited to be here. And uh, yeah, let's get into this week's problem. Okay, so this week's pattern, two pointers. What is it? So in many problems involving arrays or linked lists, especially lists, or especially sorted arrays or linked lists, where you need to find a set of elements that fulfill certain constraints, we can use the two pointers pattern to avoid looping over the array multiple times. So the pointer in this case refers to an index in the array. So let's say you have a for loop and you loop over the array, right? That's that one index that you, know, you iterate through the array. And if you wanted to look at other elements in the array at the same time to find a pair, you could use a nested for loop so that for every iteration of the outer for loop, you look at all of the rest of the elements as well. Or you can use the two pointers pattern, which is basically just initializing two pointers at different parts of the array, depending on the problem, and simultaneously looking at different parts of the array. So because we use two pointers, we are able to process two elements per loop instead of just one. And common patterns in the two pointer approach are two pointers, each starting from the beginning and the end until they meet. So instead of looping over the array once and doing that nested for loop where you loop over the rest of the elements for each element in the array, you can look at the beginning of the array and the end of the array and move the pointers towards the middle as needed, depending on the problem and only loop over the actual array one time. Another pattern where you'll see two pointers is where one pointer is moving at a slow pace, whatever that means, depending on the problem, while the other pointer moves at twice the speed, again, or whatever the problem kind of calls for. Today, we are going to be focusing on that first bullet point where you have two pointers, one at the beginning and one at the end, and they converge towards the middle, uh, depending on the actual problem. So what is this week's problem? I think it will become much clearer once we actually start to talk about an actual problem. Given an array of sorted numbers and a target sum, find a pair in the array whose sum is equal to the given target. So let's look at an example. Here is an array where we have you know, an array of numbers, one, two, three, four, and five, and a target sum of seven. So just using your eyes, right? We can look at, okay, well, um, one and two makes three, two and three makes five, none of that actually makes seven. Okay, but five and two make seven, right? Four and three also make seven. But those would be examples of pairs of elements that actually add up to that target sum. So let's just make sure here I have the, the answer as five and two. So what would the naive approach be? And I say this all the time, but it is important to actually walk through the naive approach because often walking through the naive approach will kind of illustrate why the other approach is so much better rather than jumping straight to the better approach. So the naive approach, use a nested for loop. So our target sum is seven, right? This is the same as the slide before. We have our array of one, two, three, four, and five. And here are our two pointers. So one is going to signify kind of the outer for loop, and one is going to be the nested for loop. So you'll see, we'll look at all of the elements for each of the iterations of that outer for loop. So let's watch that. So this is the yellow arrow is the outer for loop in this case. So we start at index zero and um, we, we, you know, we just have one, right? So we iterate uh, each, iteration for the yellow arrow, we're going to look at every other element in the array. Okay, one and two. Does that make seven? No. Does three and one make seven? No. Does four and one make seven? Nope. Does five and one make seven? Nope. So 
we've exhausted that those um, combinations and now we can move forward with our outer loop and you know continue to iterate that outer loop so we move to two does two and one make seven nope two and two nope two and three nope two and four nope and finally we do get to five right so that was a lot of operations for just to get that actual pair and that's a big o of n squared because we're using a nested for loop which eh, it's bad right don't do that in an interview so how can we make this better we can use the two pointers approach and rather than iterate you know in n squared po potential amount of times we can maybe get it down to just looking at each element in the array once so how can we do that so this is the two pointer approach so here's our target sum here's our array and what we can do is we can initialize those two pointers at either end of the array so the first pointer is going to point to index zero and the second pointer is going to point to um, the end of the array right so that is index zero one two three four yeah um, and how does that work how do we determine which pointer to move and how does this actually you know help us so what we can do is because we can take advantage of this because it's a sorted array we can add those two elements at either end so in this case it's five and one and that makes six and in because six is less than seven we know that we have to move our this pointer up because we're going to need more we're going to need a, a a larger number combined with five if we moved this pointer down we would just continue to get less and less and less further away from seven okay so five plus one equals six if it's less than seven so we can move our first this pointer our yellow pointer we can move it up and well we have five and two now that was way faster and we can continue in this case it, we just had to do that you know basically one time but if we had to continue to move those pointers until they converge at most we're going to just be going over the array once so that is a big o of just n significantly better than n squared so we're super happy about that so again this is a pretty simple example this is an easier problem but i just wanted to really kind of illustrate the pattern before we jump into anything harder but let's code this out all right so as per usual i am in my visual studio code editor and i have a dark color theme now because i'm not in mexico and the sunshine is not shining on my computer sadly but you know what can you do um all right so as per usual let's define our function let's make some test cases and let's get this going all right so let's um define our function we can call it maybe find pair that seems good and it's going to take an array and a target sum okay and now let's add in our test cases here so i'm just going to copy and paste some of these so we have our same example that we had in the slide so here is our array and our target sum is seven so we'd expect this to return two and five and then we have let's see console.log find pair and then we have another test case with some numbers so just some more numbers and in this case our uh, target sum is going to be 14. so we will expect this to return um, six and eight that is our pair that makes uh, 14. and then we have another one and that is going to be some more numbers so those are just you know all the numbers and in this one our target sum is 12 and we are going to expect that this is going to return um four and eight yep eight and then finally we have one more so this is find pair and here we have some more numbers all the numbers all the time 
And for this one, I think I'm going to make the target sum 10, which none of these make 10, right? Because the largest numbers in this array, 5 and 4, just makes 9. And um, so we're going to expect that that's just going to return null. We don't have a pair. OK, so those are our test cases. And let's start coding this out. So, you know, keep note of the things that are kind of inherent to this pattern and also the things that we will probably continue to see in future weeks with other problems. Because remember, the key for all of these videos that we're doing right now, all of these interview pattern videos, is to have like patterns in your toolkit that you can just take out and apply to the right problems at the right times and modify the pattern, what's inherent to the pattern that's going to be similar with whenever you're using this pattern versus all the other pieces of the algorithm. So for this pattern, we are going to define some variables, which are basically going to be where are our pointers, right? What indices are we starting with? So for this one, let's say we're going to have a left pointer, which is going to be at index zero. We're going to have a right pointer, right? And we're going to initialize that at the end of the array because we're starting at either end and going towards the middle. So that's going to be at the array length minus one. And then finally, I think we can just define, you know, our pair, which is going to be what we ultimately return at the bottom, right? So we're going to definitely return that pair. And I think we can start it at null. And basically, you know, we'll update pair, the variable pair, if we find a pair. And if not, we're just going to return null to signify that there was no pair. All right. So what do we want to do, right? We want to basically, right, we want to get the element at each pointer and add to get a pair sum, right? And at that point, once we have the pair sum of whatever pair we're looking at in the iteration, we want to ask ourselves some questions. We want to say, is pair sum equal to target sum? If yes, return it. If not, is pair sum less than the target sum? If yes, we want to move the left pointer up because we know that we need a larger number to try and create that target sum. So we want to increment the left pointer. And then finally, is pair sum greater than target sum? And if yes, we want to decrement that right pointer because we know that we're going to need a smaller number matched with the first number to try and get closer to that target sum. So let's say decrement the right pointer. So I think I'm just going to use a while loop. And my while loop condition, so the condition for when, you know, how many times is this while loop going to run, is going to be while wow, those the left pointer and the right pointer are not the same. Because as soon as they converge, we know that we've exhausted, we've looked at all the elements, and we've looked at all of the pairs that make sense to look at. And at that point, if we haven't found anything yet, there is no pair. So we can say while the left pointer is not equal to the right pointer, basically run this code. OK, and then it's it's very simple at this point. We can kind of just get that sum at that given point in the iteration and then do those simple checks of you know equals less than or greater than. So first, let's do the pair sum is going to be the array at the left pointer plus the array at the right pointer. And now we can kind of compare this pair sum to the target sum to um, you know, determine are we going to inc increment the left pointer or decrement the right, increment the left pointer or decrement the right pointer. So here, this will just be right like, First of all, if the pair sum is the target sum, we found a match, right? So if the pair sum is equal to the target sum, at that point, we can just return, right? We can say the pair is going to be the um, 
the array at the left pointer and then the array at that right pointer. And then we can break out of the for out of the wall loop, right? So that's a good way to kind of exit early in a wall loop is to use that break keyword. Um, okay, so that will take care of if we find a pair, just yes, you know, let's let's get out of here. Um, quit while you're ahead, you know. Um, and now we can just do the rest of our logic. So this is going to be an else if the pair sum is less than the target sum, right? That's that first one we have up there. So what did we say we were gonna do? We were gonna increment the left pointer. So we can just, right, increment the left pointer. And I think that is all we have to do. Um, and then finally we can do else if the pair sum is greater than the target sum we can just decrement the right pointer. And I think that's all of it. We're already returning our pair, right? So if we break out of the loop, we just return it, right? If we never get to that point and we left pointer equals the right pointer, right? So they converge, um, we'll return the null for the pair. And um, yeah, I think that's it. This is a pretty simple algorithm. And I think, you know, it's just, to illustrate like the naked pattern, really. This is more or less like there's not much to this besides for the pattern itself. Okay, so here are our test cases. Let's run this. All right, CB videos, patterns, two pointers, intro, and then let's node code this. All right, so we get two and five, that's correct. Six and eight, that's correct. Four and eight, that's correct. And no, wow, amazing. No typos. I uninstalled that Emmet autocomplete abbreviation thing. Um, and amazing, no bugs. Don't you love that? All right, so as per usual, I suggest that you go through this with your own examples or these examples and really watch those pointers converge or move towards each other. And um, you know, play around with this because we're going to up the stakes next week. We're going to do something a little bit harder. But uh, until then, kind of just sit back and enjoy the simple things in life, such as this pattern and this problem. And that's all, folks. This was a relatively easy problem just to kind of get your feet wet with this brand new two pointers pattern. Join us for our next video and we will do a slightly harder problem. Uh, again, just kind of practicing with this pattern. And I hope everybody had a really great Christmas, holidays, season, New Year's, all of the good things. I think 2022 is going to be a good year. So, you know, I'm really excited for all the future videos we have planned for this series. And yeah, I hope everyone is well. I'll see you soon. Bye.